Today our topic is ordering and classifying real numbers. Our learning target, how can I classify and order real numbers? First, some vocabulary for us. A real number is a set that contains both the rational and irrational numbers. Integer, whole number that is positive, negative, or zero. So here we have examples for you. All integers are rational numbers. And a rational number is a number that can be written as a fraction. That's the main piece. It must be able to be written as a fraction. And fractions can be written as a repeating decimal or a terminating decimal. Terminating just means ending, like the example 0.5. That decimal ends, it stops, and we should all know that this decimal is the fraction one half. So since it can be written as a fraction, it is rational. The other type of decimal is a repeating decimal, which we have this example here. The bar on top of the numbers means that those are the numbers that repeat, and so it goes on and on forever repeating. This is actually the fraction one seventh. So if you did one divided by seven, you would get that decimal. Irrational numbers then are numbers that cannot be written as fractions. They cannot be expressed in fraction form. This would be a non-repeating, non-terminating decimal. So there's no repeats and it never ends. It goes on and on forever. Like pi, that's a very famous irrational number. It goes on and on forever, no repeats. Square roots of non-perfect squares, like the square root of 67. Also, if you see dot, dot, dot at the end of a decimal, that means it is non-terminating. It does not stop. And since there's no line over it, it means it's not repeating, which makes it irrational. Classify integer, rational, or irrational. If you need to use a calculator for these, you may, but on your MCAs, which are coming up, you're not going to be able to, so try without using a calculator. 1.3, if we look at our definitions, it is a ending decimal, which means it is rational. Square root of 36. We should know that the square root of 36 is equal to 6, which is an integer. So we're going to put it here, square root of 36, which equals 6. Square root of 40 is the square root of a non-perfect square. Any square root of a non-perfect square, like 36, is always going to be irrational. So the square root of 40 is irrational. Two-thirds, that's a fraction, which means it's rational. Any number that's a fraction is rational. The absolute value of negative four-fifths. Well, absolute value means any number inside is going to become positive. So this is positive four-fifths. It's a fraction, which means it's rational. And we should actually write it as the original version, which was the absolute value of negative four-fifths. Absolute value of 0.66. Well, the absolute value of 0.66 would just be 0.66. It is an ending decimal, which means it is rational. Zero. We remember from our definition, zero is an integer. So we can cross that off and put it in our integer column. 6.6 .6 is an ending decimal, which means it's rational. So we can put 6.6 .6 in the rational column. One sixth, it is a fraction, which means it is rational. Absolute value of negative point six. Absolute value means whatever is inside comes out positive, so this would be positive point six. It is a ending decimal, which means it is rational. So inside the rational column, put the absolute value of negative point six. Negative ten. It's a whole number that is negative, which makes it a integer. 
So we can put negative 10 right there. Negative 1 half. It is still a fraction. Just because it's negative doesn't change anything. So that makes it rational. Opposite of the square root of 25. Well, the square root of 25 is 5. The opposite of that would be negative 5, which means this is rational. Pi. It's a very famous irrational number. Always irrational. Point zero 0.06. It is an ending decimal. Does not go on forever, which makes it rational. The opposite of the absolute value of negative 6. So the opposite means it's going to stay negative. The inside is going to become positive. So negative 6. It's a whole number that is negative, which makes it an integer. So in our integer column, we can put the opposite of the absolute value of negative 6, which equals negative 6. So that is sorting numbers as integers, rational or irrational. On the back, we have some more vocabulary for you. Radicals, the most common radical you'll see is a square root, which is like the square root of 25, which equals 5. Perfect squares are squares of integers. Like 2 squared equals 4, so 4 is a perfect square. So this is just a chart. The square roots of perfect squares is really helpful to have in what we're doing next. So we're just going to fill this out. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 3. Square root of 9 is 3. And so forth. These should be very common to you, and you should have these memorized. Estimate square roots. So figure out where a non-perfect square is. So the square root of 73, we can think of two perfect squares that are around that. So if we go back to our perfect square chart, between which of these numbers would 73 fall? So if we're looking, 73 would be between 64 and 81. So we would say that the square root of 73 is between the square root of 64 and the square root of 81. Square root of 64 is 8, and the square root of 81 is 9. So the square root of 73 is between 8 and 9. Now we just want to know which one is it closer to. So is 73 closer to 64 or closer to 81? Well, between 64 and 73, you would have to add 9. And between 73 and 81, you'd have to add 8. So it's just a little bit closer to the square root of 81. So it's going to be a little bit closer to 9. So if we wanted to give it a decimal approximation, it'd be about 8.6. Kind of close to the middle but not exactly halfway between. Square root of 19. Well, if we think of perfect squares that are around 19, we would think 25 and 16. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 25 is 5. Which one is it closer to? This one is a little bit easier. It's closer to 16. There's only a gap of 3 there, whereas between 19 and 25, there's a gap of 6. So it's going to be closer to 4. And if we wanted to give it a decimal approximation, we would do about 4.3. And then the square root of 47. Square root of 47, the closest one that you can think of would be the square root of 49. And then on the lower end would be the square root of 36. Square root of 36 is 6. Square root of 49 is 7 should be able to tell by just looking at it that it's closer to the square root of 49, which means it's going to be closer to 7. So a good decimal approximation would be 6.9.
Last bit, order real numbers. Order the numbers from least to greatest. Here I have a number line for us. And the hint states to estimate the square roots first. So if we start with negative square root 5, it's just a little bit backwards because it's negative. So negative square root 5 would be between the negative square root of 1 and the negative square root of 9. Excuse me, not 1, 4. So the negative square root of 9 would be negative 3, and the negative square root of 4 would be negative 2. So we know that the negative square root of 5 is going to be between negative 3 and negative 2, but it's going to be closer to negative 2 because 5 is closer to 4. So we find negative 3 and negative 2, and we put a dot about there. That is going to represent negative square root 5. We do need to label our dots. The square root of 13. So if we think about the square root of 13, think about perfect squares that are around the square root of 13. We'd have 16 and 9. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 16 is 4 and it is closer to 16, so which means it's going to be closer to 4. So in between 3 and 4, but a little bit closer to 4, is going to be the square root of 13. Square root of 9, well, we already know that one is 3. So right at 3, we can put the square root of 9. Last ones, we have 4 square root 3. Not 4 square root 3, I'm sorry. 4 over 3. It's a fraction 4 thirds, which if we made a mixed number would be 1 and 1 third, which means it's between 1 and 2, but it is 1 third of the way between 1 and 2. So that is going to be 4 thirds. And last, we have negative 2.5, which is halfway between negative 2 and negative 3. So halfway between there would be right there. So we have negative 2.5. So then if we wanted to order them from least to greatest using our number line, we'd start at the left, go to the right. So from least to greatest, our numbers would be negative 2.5, negative square root 5, 4 thirds, square root of 9, and last, the square root of 13. That's all the notes that I have for you today. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel.